I am not the best when it comes to reading book series and I tend to either DNF a book series quite quickly or just you know, taking 10 years to read one series. So standalones are definitely the type of books for me. So I thought in this video, I would give you over 15 of my favorite standalone book recommendations. I divided them into different categories. So there will be chapters in this video. They're just very broad categories, but still I have like classics, YA middle grade and adult. And that's it actually. <laughs> All of the genres are just in one of these categories. So let me know in the comments if you are also more of a standalone reader or do you generally enjoy reading series more? And if you are more of a standalone reader, also give me some of your standalone book recommendations. Okay, without further ado, let's start out with some of my favorite standalone classics. By the way, I also made a video like this a couple of years ago, so I won't be mentioning all of the books that I mentioned in there. If you want to check out that video, Please don't because it's awkward and I was very young. <laughs> but some of my favorite ones in there were The Night Circus, The Martian, A Monster Calls and Matilda. So I will not be mentioning them in this video. Okay, the first classic that is my favorite standalone and my favorite classic is probably not a surprise to you all if you've been watching my channel for a while. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Oh, this edition, this clock bound edition is just to die for. I'm obsessed. So if you don't know The Picture of Dorian Gray, this is a brilliant standalone classic for you to start with. If you want to get into classics, highly recommend this one. It is about Dorian Gray, who is this very beautiful young man. And he has this friend who paints pictures. And one day that friend is going to paint Dorian's picture. But then Dorian realizes that of course he will be growing old and that picture will remain forever young. However, there is this sort of curse that is then happening that will make Dorian live or like look young forever. Whereas that picture will grow old. It is a very mysterious story. The ending just had me like, Loved it. This is definitely my favorite classic. And then the next and final classic that is a brilliant standalone is called The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. I actually got this one as a gift from Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction. And she knows me very well. She knows that I like science fiction and that I wanted to get more into, you know, reading classics. And she recommended me this one. And it's about, I will read you from the back, when a freak cosmic event renders most of the Earth's Earth's, Earth's, Earth's population blind. Bill Mason is one of the lucky few to retain his sight. The London he walks is crammed with groups of men and women needing help, some ready to prey on those who can still see. But another menace stalks blind and sighted alike, with nobody to stop their spread. The Triffids, mobile plants with lethal stingers and carnivorous appetites, seem set to wipe out the survivors. So this is a very dystopian story. It was quite just dark and a bit scary as well but so good and I really enjoyed this one so highly recommend this one as well if you want to get into classics because this also isn't that much of a difficult classic when it comes to you know the writing style and everything and the, the words that they use the vocabulary it was brilliant so good okay let's continue with my favorite pile which is adult fiction let me just start out with two of my favorite ones Daisy Jones and the Six and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, both by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I think Taylor Jenkins Reid is a brilliant character writer and a brilliant standalone writer. Most of her books are standalones, I think, if not all of them. However, the cool thing about these books, as well as another one that I'm not gonna mention today, but still is pretty good, Malibu Rising, they all take place in the same universe, but they are standalones. But if you read these books, you will sometimes read about characters that you see in different books. Daisy Jones and the Six is all about this band called Daisy Jones and the Six and they, you know, played in the 1970s. They were a very cool rock band and it is all about how they broke up, why they broke up, what happened between the band members. And this is written in the form of an interview. One of my favorite books, I love it so freaking much. Probably also because it takes place in the 70s, which is like one of my favorite eras. And then we also have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And Evelyn Hugo was a very beautiful and famous actress um, during the 50s, I believe. And she has had seven husbands. And then in this book, we follow an interviewer, uh, like a journalist who's going to interview her about her seven husbands, talking about, you know, what happened. I think Evelyn Hugo is one of the most special characters I've ever read about. I felt so much love for her. Everything that she's been through, she is very inspiring. She's a very badass woman. I absolutely love that. Both of these books 
Yes! Then we have The Nightingale by Kristen Henna. This is a beautiful and very, very sad and emotional historical fiction story that takes place during Second World War. And we follow two sisters who each go through this very difficult time, you know, on a different journey, meeting new people and everything that they're experiencing. They are being separated. It is such an emotional story. I cried lots when reading this book, but it was so good. If you are into historical fiction and you know, are interested in reading about World War II stories, this is fiction, but um, still, every time I read something about World War II or just any war, it instantly hits harder because you just know that, you know, the things that they're talking about have probably happened in real life as well. Not necessarily with the exact characters, but just the overall, you know, general idea of what is happening in this book. So this was definitely a very unforgettable one. I thought it was so beautiful and also so incredibly emotional. Lots of emotional books in this pile, actually, because, okay, let me talk about the next one that is probably the most emotional book ever. I am going to mention it because it is a standalone and it is just amazing, but do please, you know, do your research before starting A Little Life by Hadi Yonigahara. This is the most emotional book I have ever read in my entire life. I don't think I've ever cried this much, like I've never cried this much when reading a book. This is about four college classmates who move to New York City and each of them um, just has a very different life, meeting new people and it is all about how all of them, you know, what is happening in their lives and I can't tell you anything more because I will spoil things but it is just unbelievable what can happen to people's lives and it was the saddest book in history. There are lots and lots of trigger warnings so again please look those up before deciding if you want to read this book or not. It was horrible but at the same time incredible how a writer can make you feel so many different things and so many emotions when reading words on paper. So yeah, definitely one of the best standalones in my opinion ever. Next up we have Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I actually recently discussed this book with my great aunt Karen, if you're watching this, hello, and she loved this one as well. This is an incredibly unique story, I've never read anything like it before. I will read you from the back of it because it's been a while since I read it, so I kind of forgot all of the details. But it says, for years, rumors of the Marsh Girl have haunted Barclay Clave, a quiet town on the North Carolina coast. So in late 1969, when handsome Chase Andrews is found dead, the locals immediately suspect Kia Clark, the so-called Marsh Girl. But Kia is not what they say. Sensitive and intelligent, she has survived for years alone in the marsh that she calls home, finding friends in the gulls and lessons in the sand. But then the time comes when she yearns to be touched and loved, when two young men from town become intrigued by by her wild beauty, Kia opens herself to a new life until the unthinkable happens. What I love most about this book were definitely the characters and how much I felt for these characters and especially for Kia who was such an incredible young girl. Just the writing style in this book and the way that um, Delia Owens was able to convey all of these emotions and create this image in this book. You know, I could really visualize everything very well in my head. I thought it was absolutely brilliant and I highly, highly recommend it. Next up is one that I only recently read because of the TV show The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis. And this, you have probably seen the TV show. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you haven't, this is about Beth Harmon, who is a child chess prodigy, 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 who is a chess genius. When she was about six, I believe, she started playing chess. Oh wait, eight. When she was about eight, she was sent to an orphanage and she started playing chess with the janitor there. And apparently she is a freaking chess genius. So this is all about how she is trying to, you know, use her chess talent to kind of grow in life. But with that, it also brings a lot of struggle and, um, you know, hitting rock bottom, but trying to get out of that. I would never have picked this up if I didn't see the TV show. I was like, chess, you know, whatever. But a friend of mine said, Brit, you have to watch The Queen's Gambit. I know you are going to love it. Just everything from the story to the music to the outfits. And thank you, Nadia, because it was true. It is one of my favorite TV shows now. I've watched it three times already, I think. And it just gets better and better. If you haven't seen a TV show or read the book, highly recommend it. Do read the book first. Although I do think that I prefer the TV show a little bit, it was just a little bit more exciting, even though it was very similar to the book. I think the overall, 
you know, adaptation was brilliant because it was very similar. However, some of the things I think the TV show did a bit better to just make it a bit more exciting because it is still about chess, even though it was still hella thrilling. Don't know how chess could be so exciting, but it was. Yeah, definitely love this one. Then we have one that I have talked about quite a few times already, but I think it's just an amazing standalone. It's very short and it's just so good. It is called Einstein's Dreams. And this is all about, it's fiction by the way, but this is all about dreams that Einstein could have had when he was writing his theory of relativity at the beginning of the 20th century about, you know, time and different ways that time can tick, for example, backwards or in a circle or just weirdness. <laughs> Every chapter is very, very short. It's like a short story. And every chapter is like three, four, five pages. What I think is absolutely brilliant is that in every chapter you follow new characters, but the writer is able to just, you know, make you love these characters and get to know these characters in such a short period of time, just a few chapters. And you are feeling for these characters after a few chapter, or after a few pages, which I think is amazing if you can do that as a writer. And I think that is why I love this book so much is that every chapter made me feel something new. So I definitely think it, it was a very unique one, especially also because it is about, you know, time. Then we have two more adult books I want to talk about. The first one is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I read this one the moment it was released and I absolutely loved it. This was a very beautiful and unique story, but also a very emotional one. So this is all about between life and death and people will have the opportunity. You follow this one main character called, what was her name again? Nora. Okay, Nora. And she finds herself between life and death. And where she is at that moment is called the Midnight Library. And in the Midnight Library, she has the opportunity to go and live different lives that she could have lived. Um, should small things have changed, like in the past, how different her lives could have been. So she's given the opportunity to live these different lives and to see if she maybe regretted something or maybe she, you know, became more appreciative of the life she lived. And I think one of the main things that I learned from this book is how important it is to enjoy these beautiful little things in life and how, you know, so many people are living so many different lives. The things that you see online are not very realistic. It is so much more important to focus on your own life instead of other lives or different lives that, you know, oh, I should have done that or I should have done that just really try to see the beauty in everyday things. And that is why I think this one touched me so much because it just really made me realize that I absolutely loved it. Gave it five out of five stars, cried a lot. Then we have The X-Hex by Erin Sterling. I recently read this one and I just loved it. This is a fantasy standalone romance that is all about this girl who broke up with her boyfriend and she wants to curse him because she's just so angry at him. So she wants to like curse him using a scented candle and she's like, this is probably not going to happen. She's a witch by the way, but she's like, this is not going to happen. It's not a proper candle. It's just, I'm doing this for fun, la la la. However, she actually curses him. And then years later, he comes back to where um, the town where she lives and he's still cursed. She has to lift the curse. It was incredibly fun. It was witty, it was romantic. It was just a very quick, fun, standalone fantasy romance. Yes. Okay, one more adult book I want to talk about is The Song of Achilles, written by Madeline Miller. This is all about Achilles and um, like a retelling of Achilles and this like myth. Oh my goodness, this was so emotional. I never knew anything about Achilles. I just knew his name. I didn't know anything about the rest of his story. And if you know the story of Achilles, you will know what is happening and like what will happen. I didn't, so everything was a shock to me. And I was just like, <gasps> it was emotional as heck. So good. I want to get a physical copy. I don't have a physical copy. I desperately need one in my life. It was so freaking good. Oh my goodness, pick it up. So good. Okay, then the last category is YA and middle grade. I have a couple of books. The first one is a standalone fantasy called Hold Back the Tide by Melinda Salisbury. I randomly picked this one up because I just wanted to read something short and standalone. Little did I know this was going to become one of my favorite fantasy books. This is a really brilliant story about a town where, you know, shit is going down. We have this creepy log, like a lake, and lots of things are just happening in this town. What is happening? Why is it happening? How did it start? I just liked learning about how everything started. It was, this, I'm sorry, I'm being very vague, but it's just incredibly short. I don't want to spoil anything. 
it was just a really great one and i think just everything that i was looking for in a fantasy book you know can be found in this book good characters cool plot line cool plot twist mysterious yes bit creepy as well definitely a bit creepy i read this one at night may not have been the best id but it was so good really like this one as a standalone fantasy and you just don't really see that many standalone fantasies next we have a pet by aquaki and Metsy. Pet is here to hunt a monster. Are you brave enough to look? There are no monsters anymore, or so the children in the city of Lucille have been taught. Jem and her best friend, Redemption, have grown up with this lesson all their lives. But when Jem meets Pet, she begins to question what she's been taught. Pet has come to hunt the evil lurking in Redemption's house. Super unique and mysterious, bit creepy, but also very beautiful as well. Just lots of things, lots of emotions very happy i picked this one up i also picked this one up on a whim i didn't know much about it but i just saw it here and there on booktube and on the internet thought i'd pick it up super happy i did okay lastly we have a couple of middle grade books the first one is baker's magic by diane zayla i haven't read this one in years but when i read it i just remember absolutely loving it this is a very magical story about a girl who can do magic through baking this is also about pirates and princesses it was just an incredibly magical and heartwarming read very quick read very cute very yes 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 really have to reread this one by the way oh, this was so cute another middle grade standalone is called other words for home this one wow blew my mind this is about a little syrian girl who moves to the u.s because it is not safe where she lives in syria and in the u.s she is experiencing a lot of prejudice and discrimination and of course she is really struggling with that because people are not accepting her for who she is and for you know where she comes from which is incredibly sad but something that this book is you know teaching its readers especially children is how important it is that we learn more about different cultures about different people and i think it is a brilliant book for children where they can learn so much about prejudice and racism and discrimination and I just listened to it in one day I listened to it on audiobook I listened to it in one day was absolutely mind blown because it is so informative but also um very beautiful because in this book she's also really focusing on finding a new family away from home and how you can definitely find a new family that feels so much like home in a completely different country it was stunning, it was beautiful, it was emotional, it was informative. One of the best middle grade books I've ever read. And the last one is called Where We Go From Here. I'm sorry, this is not middle grade, this is a uh, young adult. I mixed up the list but this is a young adult book that takes place in brazil and it is about three men who all in some way are dealing with hiv and aids one of them has hiv one of them just found out he is hiv positive and one of them knows someone who has hiv this book was absolutely amazing because it taught me so much about hiv and aids and how there is this huge stigma surrounding this virus and it really taught me a lot about this disease and how people who are HIV positive or have AIDS can actually become undetectable, meaning that they won't be able to transmit it to anyone else, how they can live a very, very long and happy life, even though they are HIV positive. I think it is so great that the writer decided to, you know, convey this message through these three young men, because it is very accessible to young readers, you know, young adult readers, and even like if you're older as well, I'm not really young adult anymore, <laughs> but I still just Thought it was amazing so emotional as well but so very informative so i'm very happy that i also just randomly decided to listen to this book on audio i saw it and i thought i'm gonna give it a try so incredibly happy i did oh my goodness these were a lot of standalone books i just love talking about standalone books because they are my favorite books again let me know in the comments your favorite standalones so you know I, i'm always on the hunt for new standalone book recommendations i really hope you liked this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and if you want to comment something but you don't know what to comment comment something of like a baked good like a pie or a cupcake is there a cupcake emoji because of baker's magic because it is about baking and just sweets so anything sweet or pastry ish dessert comment an emoji like that so i know you've reached the end of this video if you've reached the end oh my goodness well done i really hope you liked this video again thank you so much for watching and i will hopefully see you in my next video bye